Today's episode is sponsored by Loot Crate. The second best thing to gaming is sweet, sweet gaming gear. The only thing better than sweet gaming gear is getting it delivered straight to your door every month. Loot Crate is the leader in gaming and pop culture gear, and now through their partnership with the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast, you can get 15% off a Loot Crate using code PODCAST15. Simply go to MultiplayerPodcast.com slash Loot Crate, pick out a crate, enter code PODCAST15, and get ready for gaming loot nirvana. Still looking for that awesome Christmas gift? Look no further than MultiplayerPodcast.com slash Loot Crate. Welcome to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast, where a video game podcast that's here to bring you honest, heartfelt reviews from different games, some old, some new, some big, some small, and today we are talking about Borderlands 3. Borderlands is a first-person shooter, action RPG, looter shooter, that's a mouthful, Developed by Gearbox Software and published by 2K Games. So let's get started by introducing the two best vault hunters this side of Pandora, Josh. Oh, oh I'm first. <laughs> <laughs> I was just staring at Paul, waiting for Paul to like say hi. <laughs> oh man, you caught me off guard. Uh, hey guys, how's everyone? I don't know what to say now. <laughs> and, Dang it. And, and Paul. Uh, age before beauty. Bandit life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I could go for some skag milk right now. Oh, skag milk's great, man. The little curdles that just you chew them up. Disgusting. Mm. Wait, do skags have nipples? Uh, I don't know where else the milk would come from, Josh. You, you, no, it, that, it was, has dude, to. that was a Meet the Fockers reference. You can milk anything with nipples. Oh, yeah. You can you. milk anything with nipples. I set that up, and you guys did not knock them down. Yeah. I have nipples, Josh. <laughs> can you milk me? <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, all right, guys. Let's start with Borderlands 3. <laughs> what What is Borderlands? Like, what does the typical gameplay look like? Uh, very cell shaded. Well done. Yeah. Basically, looter shooter is the first phrase to come to mind. Lots of action, lots of guns, lots of humor. Probably at the teenage level, I would say, but very goofy. Very humorous. What? How dare you? Does that mean I have the uh, sense of humor of a teenager? Because I find Borderlands 3 pretty hilarious. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, and, and the at the core of this game, it's a long campaign with a lot of side quests and you can play it co-op with up to four players and even with the co-op you're just going through different parts of the campaign basically you all join into uh, whoever's hosting's game and then you guys kind of go through the campaign from there yeah i guess i mean if nobody's ever played borderlands before i'm sure I feel like everybody has at least heard of it, but if you've never played a Borderlands, this is, I mean, quintessentially, I wanted to use a really big word there, by the way. (laughs) It is. Nice job. Thanks. It is. (laughs) (laughs) It's a shooter, but the main shtick is the insane number of guns that you can get in this game. There is... Honestly, it feels like there is no end to the customization or the types of guns that will drop. It's like Diablo, but first-person shooter with guns. And every now and then, an amazing gun will drop. But there are just guns aplenty everywhere. And so you have to really enjoy the loot component and the getting a new gun every like 30 seconds component to, like, to really get into the, the, like, the gist of what Borderlands is. Yeah, and you don't stick with a gun for long. Like, you, at least I, rotate through guns almost every level. So, like, as soon as we beat a boss and get new guns, I'll play with those ones. We'll beat another boss, and then, like, I'll update all of my guns. Like, you don't don't stick with them super long. At least until later rounds, when it's, like, kind of more end end game content. Yeah, where it takes a little bit longer to level. So if you have a gun that you're in love with, you'll be able to use it for a long time. 
but in the beginning you do level pretty quickly so you're definitely swapping out for new weapons all the time yeah so this game is available on pc xbox and playstation um they don't have cross play across devices yet but that is supposed to come out in 2021 um right now they have like kind of almost pseudo cross play where like in between steam and epic so everyone doesn't have to have it on the same platform on pc um so that's that's like a nice feature a nice to have there um but i'm looking forward to cross play across you know console and pc um, which is really when you can get everyone together. Um, and then let's let's jump into the graphics. Borderlands, I don't know if they've invented this sort of graphics, but like this is like the the flag bearer for like this visual style. I feel like the original Borderlands was the like the cell shaded graphics. There might have been a game before that. Like, what was the one Zelda that had the cell shading? Wind Waker? Wind Waker. Yeah, cell shading's been around a long time. Yeah, I just don't know which one came out first. But I feel like Borderlands was one of the one of the first that, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, bet money on that. But, you know, they, for at least for first person shooters, they were the first to do it. I, I, like, I feel like the graphics have definitely gotten better from one, two to three. I mean, three is, it's a, it's a, really good looking game in my opinion i mean i don't ever play borderlands 3 and go oh these graphics are out of date or this doesn't look good i mean do you guys get that impression at all i think the game's gorgeous the colors in particular take advantage of the animation style so it does not look realistic at all if you're not familiar with cell shade animation it's a little bit more cartoony a little bit more fantastical but I think that lends really well to this kind of game where the humor is very elevated, the characters' personalities are very elevated, so you get a lot of colors that just really pop. And I think I said this when we recorded Call of Duty Cold War, but even more so in Borderlands 3, the colors really stand out on my IPS monitor. I, I don't know how you guys felt, but after reinstalling Borderlands 3 and having not played it for a while... I was just shocked at the colors. They really stand out in contrast so well with one another. And they they lean into like the the comic booky like styling where it's like hard, thick, like black lines separating colors, but then those colors are very bright and vivid and like even though everything has this sort of like blocky outlined texture there's like a lot of detail in there and I feel like that's where it's progressed from Borderlands 1 is like they had to stay cell shade to like respect the franchise but there's a lot more detail within like the textures and everything that really pops out. Yeah, that makes sense. I do feel like the guns look way better than they used to. And, and like it's kind of like you said the fine details in the various guns that you pick up and just the way they look and the glow that because guns are they have different elements that they can be and stuff like that like the glow to them and some of those effects like we were playing the other day and i had a rocket launcher that had two different modes and when i would switch between the modes like part of the rocket launcher would light up to like indicate that it was on this mode and then if i switched modes like that part would go dark and another part would light up and it's those little effects that i feel like they've they've really honed in on you know on, on this last one um, so moving from graphics to sound, like what's, is there anything special about the sound in Borderlands? Is this where we talk about Claptrap's voice? Yes. This is, <laughs> this is literally. I love Claptrap. The Don't you, you better not be about to slander Claptrap, Paul. No, it's, it's the, the, like for me, it's the, the sound's fine, but the like humor that they do through sound effects and through voice lines is only matched by portal like this game is very very funny oh yeah and i think that the voice acting is hilarious like there is no question that everyone in this game is kicking it up about five notches above where it probably <laughs> should be uh, everything's very uh accentuated Vaughn is this guy who's running around in his underwear with a cape tied around his neck, and he yells things like bandit life, <laughs> which is why I yelled it in the intro. I don't know how much we want to get into the humor 
uh, right now. But when I think about the sound, I'm not so much thinking about ambient noises in Borderlands 3, but I do definitely think about the comedic voice talents. Uh, Claptrap, I know, is a bit of a lightning rod figure. People either really love him, others really hate him. But as soon as he's introduced in this game, he tells you that he has pre-ordered your gravestone with your name on it, just in case. You know, he, he's bringing that high-pitched voice right off the bat. I really love it. I, I, I really love the voice talent in this game. Yeah, I was going to say, when when you talk about audio, I don't think, I'm the same as you, like, I don't think like, oh, the surround sounds amazing, or the sound effects are amazing. It is 100% the characters, the audio lines, the dialogue, the banter sometimes, but that is the one thing that stands out more than anything else to me. And it's even while you're fighting. Like if you're fighting and you're, you know, shooting acid, you know, gun on somebody, when he dies, like they'll say different voice lines from that versus if they get frozen or you know, there's just these random like hilarious comments that get thrown out like even in the heat of battle much less like when you're actually interacting with with other like the main characters in the game and stuff too. So if you're listening for that, I think it makes all the difference in the world. But other I mean audio wise, nothing else really stands out to me. And it's like it's a triple A game. So the bar is high. Like everyone expects there to be, you know, different amazing sound effects for all the different guns, for like all the environments to have very immersive sound effects. Like that's expected and then i think for borderlands where they take it like above expectation is with the voice acting with the characters and with all of those things you guys called out yeah i I don't want to spoil what i want to say about some of the different individual weapons in the game but they really did a fantastic job with the different guns they all make different sounds and they make different noises there's just so many different modes between all the weapons. So a lot of them will actually let you change their fire mode to where they become a completely different gun. And they did such an amazing job with the different sounds in the game and just all the humorous writing. There's just so many funny lines in this game. It's not even... Sometimes the guns are hilarious. Like, the sounds from the guns. Like, you know, with Paul, I think you had the gun that when you reload it, you throw the gun out and it bounces around and it goes ow, ow, ow yep. before it like blows up. <laughs> that is my favorite gun like, in the game. Yeah. Like it's it's in a couple different versions, but you'll be playing and then someone be like, ah, let me switch out my loadout. And then everyone's like, all right, like everyone's going through their guns and then you start like a new section of the campaign. And then all of a sudden you hear ow, 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 ooh, ow, ow, ow. And then you're like, someone equipped that dang gun. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, you love it, Todd. But do you know who hates it? Everyone else that's not using it. (laughs) Yeah. That gun is hilarious, but I have such a tendency to constantly hit R to reload every time I kill a character. And so when I had that weapon, uh, it, it consumes ammo when you reload. So I was continually throwing out my gun. It would explode into a bunch of grenades. All the grenades are all saying, ow, ow, ow. And the next thing you know, I've reloaded four times in the last 10 seconds, which is how long it takes for the grenades to explode. So now there's just 12 grenades all yelling, ow, at the same time. It's very funny. It's just audio chaos. (laughs) Uh, I don't know if that's a (laughs) phrase I've ever used, but if any game has audio chaos, it's Borderlands 3. All right. So, using that consumes ammo? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, when you reload, every time... Yeah, you lose the I extra ammo that's that. in your mag. You know, you know, last night when I was complaining... <laughs> that's why you guys are always out of ammo! I just figured it out! Like, and, uh, all right, wait, no lie, we played yesterday... I was out of ammo the entire time. Yeah. You're both like, I'm completely out of ammo. Josh, you're going to have to kill all these guys all by yourself. I've got no ammo left. And then I'm like, how do you guys keep running out of ammo? Well, now I know. Yeah, that takes ammo, Todd. Like, I hate to admit it, but that's literally why. Because I reload. You take three shots. You kill one guy. You reload. (laughs) You don't want to be empty for the next fight. And I didn't know that consumed ammo. And that makes sense. Yep, just flushing that ammo down the drain. I'm I'm also the person who, like, shoots one time and then throws the gun because you're like, this will cause damage. 
So I was excessively reloading <laughs> with that gun. <laughs> Well, it looks really cool, too. <laughs> like, when I was using that kind of gun, I, I love to play Borderlands 3 in close quarters. And so I would always run and slide and shoot an enemy. And then I would chuck my gun. And if you hit them directly, the grenades immediately burst. And so a lot of times, that's how I would actually finish off enemies. Just consume a little bit of that extra ammo, kill them with your gun exploding. It's fun, but it definitely takes extra ammo. Those aren't just free grenades. <laughs> Um, now we know why you guys were out of ammo now, the whole time. Now we know. Yep. All right. So what what makes Borderland different than Halo, different than Call of Duty, different than any like other first person shooter? Like what are the mechanics that make it special? What like what gameplay play elements like evolate or oh my goodness. What gameplay elements um, really brings it to like that bar with other AAA titles. Um, there's a lot, honestly. Borderlands does a little bit of everything, which I think helps to set it apart. I mean, there's there's really good level design. The graphics obviously stand out, but there's good boss fights. Um, I mean, when you're comparing it to like other first person shooters, there's you know, you are going to fight bosses, which is fun. Obviously, the the plethora of guns is what really sets it apart there. But you'll have different sequences. So, like, there are vehicles in this game, and they're fun to drive, and they're strong. So you might have a vehicle that's got a rocket launcher on it or lobs, like, exploding, you know, 55-gallon drums or these weird wheel things that you sit inside and then they shoot lasers. And a lot of the levels will incorporate the driving around the vehicles. Um the the plot is there is a plot to this game i mean there is a storyline but you meet and follow characters as you go along and those characters are hilarious and the dialogue that happens is really funny in that regard as well and then i i mean every there's characters too so this is a character based game where i think it's I don't know. I've only ever played the same character the whole time, so I might sound dumb here, but I think there's four different characters that you can be. Yeah. Um, and then each character has a very unique... Like, they have three very unique skill trees that change the way your character plays, like, completely. Um, and so there is a lot of customization to be able to play how you want and to use the different abilities and the ultimate abilities that they might have. Um, I, you know, I play Moe's who's like, she has this giant mech thing that she jumps into and then it stomps around with like Gatling guns and flamethrowers and stuff and just wrecks everything for a short period of time. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot that sets this game apart in my opinion. And it's not any one thing, but it's when you take all of that as a whole and put it together in a first person shooter game, I feel like it really stands out. Yeah, yeah. What makes this game stand apart from any other first-person shooter is that it's very much a character-driven game built around cult of personalities. So there are very unique characters that stand out that you just cannot forget. Anyone who's played with Claptrap knows exactly what he's like. And you have Ellie, the giant, large uh, mechanic. You can't forget her. <laughs> You have the Calypso twins who are a parody on Twitch streamers and they're streaming their violence and saying things like, don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. And <laughs> there's just so many characters like that. Uh, the game is very much built on the personality of these characters in the world. Uh, it's a very vibrant world in that regard. To me, I would say the game that it's most like is not even something like Halo or Call of Duty. It's more like Far Cry to me where it's focused on humor, lots of weapons, crazy over-the-top situations, crazy people, and and that's definitely what makes it stand out. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I've ever laughed at a first-person shooter like I have at Borderlands. Far Cry, that's a really good analogy, because Far Cry 5, at least, was pretty goofy, and there were a few moments that made me crack up, but yep. Borderlands, more often than not, I find I'm laughing at what somebody is saying or somebody is doing. Yeah, and the difference is that Far Cry is very extra, but it's also very serious. Borderlands is very silly. Everything really just kind of boils down to a fundamental level of being silly. Um, 
having a good time, poking fun at everything. I don't know that I've ever played Borderlands and felt any kind of sense of dread or worry the way that you do in Far Cry. In in Borderlands, it's definitely the level of humor that's the first thing that people probably think of. Or the the song Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by Cage the Elephant in the first game. That that game made it such a hit. Oh, that's and right. And I kept seeing the song in the trailers <laughs> it did. and thought I better go check this game out. Yeah. I I think both of you guys are spot on. Like it's about the campaign, it's about the characters. Um a little bit it's about the guns. Like I th- I think I read with the the like procedurally generated guns there are 1 billion options like if you take all of the like different attributes that go into it which is insane so like you'll never encounter the same gun twice pretty much like while you're playing it um and then like i think something borderlands does really well is the uh, the co-op like you everyone on your squad doesn't have to be the same level it will bring the highest player down it'll bring the lowest player up and then you will all play at a semi like common area where it'll be the same difficulty for everyone no matter if you're level 80 or level 5 and i i think they do it really well where no one feels out of place like, there are some things where, like, if you have a really high level, you have more access to the skill tree. Like, the guns you're getting have more perks and, like, better perks on them. So, like, there is an advantage. But you don't, like, the person who's level 5 doesn't feel like they're not doing anything. Like, they still feel like they're contributing. Like, they can kill enemies pretty quick. They don't have as many skills, but... Like, they're adding to the game. And I, like, I think we were talking a couple episodes ago, like, co-op, like, multiplayer games are kind of hard to come by. And I feel like them, like, bringing down and, like, figuring out a way so you can play across people at different skill levels and everyone to feel a part of the game and not like someone's carrying or someone's, like, dead weight is, like, really special to this game oh i i completely agree like right now it's kind of hard to play call of duty cold war because in our friend group we have a wide range of ability and we can all group together and it normalizes the skill rating for the matchmaking but i can play really well when i queue by myself but when i partner with some of our friends who are really good i basically just get slaughtered and i can't build up any kind of score streak or anything like that But with Borderlands, I do think that they did a really good job that anyone at any level can contribute. You can play together, and you don't ever have to get carried in Borderlands. Something that's really cool, and honestly, I don't know why more games don't do this, because I'm not not familiar with any that do it as well as Borderlands, but like I'm higher level in Borderlands than you guys are by a fair amount, and when we were playing the other day... What's that? Hey, hey, <laughs> weird man. flex, you know, but okay, Josh. Yeah, humble brag, you know. Um, but I was asking you guys, you know. <laughs> but I remember thinking, like, how are you guys not getting slaughtered by these guys? Because on my screen, they were like level twenty-seven or whatever, and I was like, you know, these guys are hitting me pretty hard. How are you guys not getting wrecked? And then you're like, oh, well, on my screen, they're level like eight. And then so it's not it's not just that they average out the levels and kind of split split the difference. It's that the guys I'm fighting, even though I'm right next to you, are level 27 for me. So they're shooting me and doing damage to my health like they would as as they're on my level. But then when they're shooting you, they're hitting you like a level seven guy would. And I don't, that's a phenomenal way to do it because the difficulty curve stays the same, you know, the whole time, regardless of whether you have a level one guy or a level 50 guy. And I don't know of any other game that does that. Like people have tried, but the, however, Borderlands three does it is phenomenal because it keeps that, that fun for everybody that's in your party. And you're not excluded because you guys are lame and are 20 levels behind me. Right. 
and then like you know you'll feel a little bit of of it with perks and like mods on guns and some of that stuff but once you get past like i'm level three and like my assault rifle has a scope and that's about it um like you still hit just as hard and like that's what makes you feel like you can keep going on you can keep contributing and like gaining level with the group um all right so i want to talk about the game modes there is campaign then campaign co-op and then (laughs) that's it that's all the game that's all you need (laughs) there's there's a very very subtle uh 1v1 system where if you start shooting a teammate it you can you know challenge them to a duel yeah you have to melee them actually Oh, is it yeah, melee? yeah. You have to like melee them, and then it's like that's your way of challenging them to a duel. And when Josh out uh, levels everyone, <laughs> he out duels everyone. The, yeah, the uh, the they do not normalize the difference in levels when you duel each other. Because I remember like punching you, and then you were like, "Wait, what's this?" I didn't even realize that it started the duel. And then you were like, what's this? And you're like, oh, a duel. And then I was like, okay, cool. This will be fun. And then I just splattered you. <laughs> I did not feel good after that duel. Yeah, I didn't either. That. Oddly enough, it was not challenging <laughs> it was at all. such a bad slaughter that you didn't even yeah, feel good. I didn't. Todd, did you feel like an ant under a clown shoe? <laughs> I, I did. I did. I felt. I felt like... Like, you know how sometimes you'll see, like, dads playing football against professional, like, uh, NFL players? And, like, the, the, the caliber of NFL players is so much higher and they're so much faster and more agile and all that. It's embarrassing to, like, an average person. And that's how it felt. It, it felt like I was playing rec league and then josh was like yeah i just got drafted you and know, then like slaughtered me. you know i don't even feel good about winning the duel when i don't run over and like instantly teabag you afterwards so yeah. that one was just not you know it wasn't fair mm. just yeah. one shot todd just yeah. instantly like apologizes like sorry i didn't mean to do that now okay let's not get crazy <laughs> i would never apologize for beating you in a duel but <laughs> too far too yeah um, all right, so is there anything that makes Borderlands 3 stand out against other Borderlands games? Yes. Really? I would say no. Like, other than the graphics are slightly improved, I personally don't see a huge difference. I played a lot of Borderlands 2. I have played less Borderlands 3. Let's just put it that way. Um, I, you know, It's one of those where I don't feel like the formula has changed enough that it has like felt like a super strong sequel to me. I, I mean, the graphics are definitely improved, but I, I maybe the, like, they even had skill trees before. I think the skill trees are a little bit more expanded now uh, in 3, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, no, I don't. I personally, I don't. Oh, see, I do, because even though the gameplay is basically the same, Borderlands 2 just had so much of a better story and a much, much better main villain. Like, Handsome Jack has always stuck with me. He was such a fun villain. He would call you up, poke fun at you, show up in battles, constantly there, and and over the course of the game, you would learn more about him and his backstory, and he was truly evil and a great villain. But in Borderlands 3, I just don't care about any of it. Like, these Calypso (laughs) twins are so uninspired. I did not find them to be interesting. Borderlands 2, I loved so much. There were so many moments that just really stuck out. Like Sanctuary, when it takes off, right? You have to escape, and the whole city goes up in the air. You're fighting to defend it. But in Borderlands 3, I I don't know. I I felt like they just took one step too far in the silliness where you the 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 calypso twins what are their names tyrene and god god queen tyrene and Uh, what's troy that's the problem i can't remember her brother's name now 
Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah Troy and Tyreen. I, I didn't care about them. It just seemed silly. Like, how did these teenager streamers band together all of these bandits across the entire planet and get them to work together? It, it just didn't seem believable. And, and I know that Borderlands is not supposed to stand up to a high level of scrutiny. I mean, please, it's Borderlands, right? It is what it is. But Borderlands 2 did so much of a better, superior job story-wise. Like, if you're only going to go back and play one, just go back and play Borderlands 2. All right. So, my question was, how does Borderlands 3, like, how is it different than other Borderlands? And your response was, it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> it stands out it's, because I mean, it's that's worse. A, that is a fair... <laughs> <laughs> Story-wise, yes, and, and you can't skip cutscenes in Borderlands 3, so you're going to be forced to watch them regardless, but if you don't care about the storyline, and you just want to point and click at something colorful and pretty and, and, and funny and kill it, then you're probably not going to care. Uh, Borderlands 3 probably would be the best if you just care about the, the gameplay. It's very smooth. All the gunplay is fantastic, but if you do care about story and you want to get invested into the story, then Borderlands 2 is the standout. But ne- neither is bad. They're both good. I just think Borderlands 2 is superior. I do feel like the variety of guns in 3 is a lot more. Um, I was. I, I don't think Borderlands 2 even comes close to comparison as to the amount of guns and different types of guns that you can get and use and the different like abilities. It's and- like, un- yeah, unique mods and abilities on guns in Borderlands 3 is hilarious and amazing we should probably talk about the guns a little bit yeah yeah yeah. i mean i I don't want to sound like the naysayer i'm mostly just playing devil's advocate here with you guys but a lot of those guns are ridiculous like do you know how many times i've picked up a shotgun that has major zoom oh oh yeah or (laughs) random mods that just don't make any sense like sure maybe there's a billion weapon combinations but that's like ridiculous random mods thrown together that just don't make any sense. Like, I don't need zoom on my shotgun or uh, uh, some kind of ridiculous reload mechanic on a sniper rifle or, you know, something like that. Yeah, this getting the sniper rifle that has 150% melee damage <laughs> mod to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to snipe here, man. Uh, all right, so let's let's talk about the guns. So... They are procedurally generated weapons that vary in damage range, ammo capacity, and other special perks, giving the game one billion guns with a with a B. With the Destiny has maybe thousands, and that's probably second place. Yeah. It's you said it earlier. I mean, there is a big part of this game that is spent in your inventory going through the just dozens of guns that you've picked up for that planet. I I mean, and they cover everything. I mean, you've got rocket launchers, snipers, SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns. um, Uh, Did you say pistols? I mean, I'm pistols. No, I didn't say pistols. Um, And then, but what's goofy is inside of each of those categories, they're. There's so many that are just completely different. Like, you might have laser assault rifles. You might have kinetic assault rifles. You might have elemental assault rifles. You might have, um, like, chain gun type assault rifles where you never have to reload, but they will they will overheat if you just constantly fire them for too long. Um, I, Grenade launchers on an assault rifle. Alternative modes like that. Right, yeah. And then some guns have dual fire modes where it's like... I like I the other day I was using a rocket launcher I, I talked about earlier where it shoots out rockets, right? But or you can switch modes and the rockets will stick to whoever they hit and then they'll sit there and like cook for 10 15 seconds and then they'll explode which does even more damage. So there's the trade-off of like do you want the instant damage or do you want higher damage later on? There's like five different elemental types or four different elemental types in this game. On top and, of that. And it's it's kind of cool, like, you know, how in a lot of games you can switch between burst fire, single fire, like different types of fire modes. I found a lot of my guns where it's like, do you want to do fire damage or frost damage? And, like, it's the same button to switch between, like, burst or full auto. It's 
the gun's always full auto, and it's like, what type of damage do you want to do? Which is fun when you're running around, you start, like, hitting someone, and then it's, like, no effect, and then you switch modes, and then it's, like, critical. Then you're like, heck yes, I did the right <laughs> yeah. decision. Yep. But then there's strategy there's strategy to that, too, because some enemies will have shields yeah. and strong shields, which is shields. You have to use a shock weapon to bring the shields down. And then some enemies have armor where you better you better have a weapon that does acid damage, which will rip through that armor. But if you don't, then you're not doing much damage to those guys. Yeah. And it's like this is the the part of the game that is like, you know, a couple inches wide and then three miles deep. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you talk about gunplay in Destiny, or not not Destiny, sorry, in Borderlands, it's insane. Like, there are so many different values that go into what gunplay is in Borderlands 3. And, like, it, it's a endless trough of guns. Yeah, another cool thing is that you can carry a lot of guns and you can actually equip several of them to swap back and forth. I'm so used to having just two guns. Like, I'm just in Call of Duty mode. I got a primary and a secondary gun. And that's why I kept running out of ammo the other night when we picked up Borderlands 3 and and started playing again. Like, we had all played it at release, but we picked it back up and I was running out of ammo. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, yeah, I've got a, a third gun that I can equip. I just forgot I could switch to it. So you can carry, like, a sniper, an assault rifle, and a shotgun if you want. You know, you can kind of combine those weapons, whatever you, you want to carry. You can equip up to four at a time. Now, something else, too, that we can't we can't forget to talk about is that as you get into some of the better weapons, you wind up with unique flavor text on these weapons. So when you find a weapon, it might have, in red letters, it'll just say, like, a saying. Like, you won't even understand what it does, and they don't tell you. Like, that's kind of the cool right. part is it'll just be like E equals MC squared or third times the charm. Yeah, like half a proverb. Or, yeah, it's like it's just got these really weird sayings, but that means that that gun does something unique. And sometimes what it does is super cool. Sometimes maybe not so much, but, you know, that's all of the stuff in this game. So grenades and your shield generators and the guns and things like that. So part of the fun is when you get a gun that has the unique text on there trying to figure out what that actually does is super funny and todd you and i uh, you and i did the quest paul wasn't there where we got the the, uh, this goes into some of the hilarious quest lines but the the main enemies the calypso twins they're always on your intercom so they're talking to you at any time and she tells you like hey i need you to help me with my fans i'm gonna set up this death trap i want you to go kill yourself in it and if you do, I'll reward you with a really good gun. And she even says, like, I know you're a gun whore, so I know you want this gun. So just go do this for me. And what happened, Todd? So so you I watched it was funny. We were <laughs> we were paired. So I was like, Josh, go into the death booth and see what happens. It'll be hilarious. And then I didn't even have to die, but Josh died, and it rewarded both of us the gun. But whenever you fire this gun, you hear on the intercom, gun slut, we got a gun slut over here, <laughs> because you you like you wanted the gun so bad, you're willing to sacrifice yourself. And there was a time... Uh, like a week, two weeks later that uh, we were playing this game and like Josh was firing and then I hear gun slut over here. We got a gun slut. And I'm like, Josh, do you have that gun? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm still playing with <laughs> it. I really like gun. that gun. <laughs> it's a really good pistol. But what's funny is like, there's other voice lines. So when you were using this particular gun that you got in this particular quest, like, you know, we're playing and you recognized it, but I was reloading, and and she even goes like, uh, "The gun slut's reloading right now. Now's the time to kill her." And it's like <laughs> it, it 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 knows the context of what's going on, and so it's just hilarious right. that this gun is commenting, you know, on what's happening, and that's just one of the unique things that these weapons can have. And just even the amount of voice lines in this game, 
is endless. Like oh, it's, it's a it's a novel. It's Moby Dick of voice lines, yeah. like a never ending, <laughs> like just giant, giant book of voice lines where like you will constantly run up against new voice lines or different ones in weird contexts and it's it's awesome. It's hilarious every single time because you always encounter something new. Yep. Borderlands, just as long as Moby Dick and equally high in quality. <laughs> All right. So something I think that is very interesting that I didn't know until like I started doing research about this game is Borderlands 3 has an integration with Twitch streams so viewers can explore the streamer's inventory and a special chest in-game will offer opportunities for the viewers to receive the same gun and item that the streamer finds and they can enter a, a code to get that specific gun in their own game scaled for that character. Which is like this gun is about games and or guns and how awesome the and the wide variety of guns and type of guns. I feel like this is a next level like interaction with Twitch streamers on like you can watch a stream, like the streamer gets an awesome gun, and then you can get that gun in your own game, which is amazing yeah that's pretty cool that is such a cool like feature it's very clever it definitely gets people watching streams interacting with who's you know who's streaming at the time too um they do a lot of stuff like that they give away shift keys there's a golden chest inside the main base and they'll give that you can only you know it's like the best gear for your level at the time you have a much higher chance of getting something legendary and they'll give away shift keys that are that will unlock those chests and stuff like that too so they do a lot of really cool stuff to get players involved in the game and in the community and things like that yeah so last for this segment what would you guys do to improve this game Oh man. Um I mean it's such a good game. It's it's an all-around complete game. The <clears throat> I, I mean 3 had a slightly weaker story. I'm with Paul on that one. Um I don't know, man. I honestly there's not much I can think of. Like better PVP cuz it doesn't really focus on PVP. You can duel people, but I think the nightmare of trying to balance pvp with a billion guns might be a problem which is why they don't even try to do it um yeah i I don't know i don't really have anything that i would say stands out to me as like a glaring issue with this game that i would want to fix or change Mm. yeah i i don't know if it's a glaring issue but probably my biggest complaint with playing co-op is just the fact that death doesn't really mean anything Like, you can just die as many times as you want. You'll just lose a couple credits, and then you get resurrected. Even before you die, you have this second wind mechanic, which basically means if you get downed, you're crawling on the ground. But if you kill an enemy, then you basically self-res immediately, or a partner can also come up and revive you. But worst case scenario, if you do die... You just respawn right around the corner with a line of dialogue about how death is only for the poor, and then they keep some of your money. So I feel like the game is just almost too easy, and you can play pretty recklessly. I I, I don't know. I guess maybe just make the game a little bit harder to go through. Yeah, I felt I felt torn between either so playing co op like I. I'm the host of the multiplayer podcast. I like multiplayer games. I don't play a lot of games single player. So playing multiplayer co-op with this game, I either found myself playing the same scenes over and over because multiple people were hosting um, as we were playing this. So like Josh would host, we would play through, and then Paul and I would get on And then we would play through the same scene that I played through with Josh, but like I didn't have credit for that scene because Josh was playing it. So my storyline didn't progress. And like, there's either a balance, like there's this weird like dichotomy between 
me playing the same scene four or five times or me jumping so far in the storyline I had no idea where we were and then right. it was like I I like I don't want to pull Josh back 2 hours and make him replay all of that so I'll just ignore like most of the storyline and then I'm not invested and then like I'm disconnected and the main purpose of this game is the storyline so I feel like I don't know the solution to this, but I feel like it was torn between like either replaying the same scene over and over or skipping large chunks. Um, I wish there was like some sort of thing where like if I played through, you know, chapters one, two, and three, and then seven, eight, and nine, that like it would, it would say like, Hey, you should play these ones in the middle. And then when I get to seven, eight, and nine, it's like, you already played these, like, do you want to skip ahead? And like, I had the option to do so. Like when we were playing through, I never had those options. I never like had anything like that. And I feel like that would have been a good, like, I don't want to play through the same thing we just play through. It's kind of a goofy solution, but honestly, you almost just have to go through and play the game solo and then start with the multiplayer after because otherwise you're going to have like you just said you're going to have out of order quests and and leveling unless you're always the one hosting which might just be what you have to do or if you just always play with the same friends just make a gentleman's agreement that you're only going to play when all of you are on and available but that that can be hard to coordinate all right paul what does the community think of this game Oh, the the community has a lot to say about Borderlands 3. A lot of of different things. (laughs) Yeah, so I grabbed four four reviews off Steam. And Borderlands 3 infamously started on the Epic Games launcher. And some people had some strong opinions about that. But like Todd mentioned in the intro, it's now available on both Epic Games and Steam. I tried to just grab reviews off Steam since that's what we always use. And the first review that I have here is Positive. And the review reads, I can't wait to have to walk five minutes to go talk to Lilith. (laughs) Edit. I've talked to Lilith so many times that I'm starting to doubt my sanity. I mean, that really is like a good 28 missions in this game. Just walk and go talk to Lilith, especially in the beginning. Yeah, there's definitely some traversal that happens in this game. It's great when they give you a car to do it, not so much when you have to run halfway across a level. And they do have fast travel in the in the maps and stuff, but sometimes the maps are so big, you're not really sure where, like which fast travel you're supposed to go to. <laughs> right. So then you might pick the wrong one or two, and then you're like, oh, wait, okay, it's over on this zone. Or there's times I've found myself like running out of the, the like area, and then I'm like, I forgot a vehicle. Do I want to run backwards for like two minutes to get a new vehicle? How far can it be? And then I end up running for six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, like I, sh- really I should have turned around. <laughs> yeah, this game has just a ton of terrain. So you you do end up traveling to a whole lot of other locations, which really opens up the world a ton. You're not just running around Pandora in, in this one. All right. So second review. This is a negative review, and it reads, Side quests are fine, 7 out of 10, standard Borderlands fare. Graphics, sound, music, 9 out of 10, easily an improvement over Borderlands 2. Gameplay, 10 out of 10, exactly what I wanted from a Borderlands sequel, wouldn't change a thing. Main story, 2 out of 10, intolerable, everything about the main story is wrong and bad. Boring and unfunny, unskippable and cringe. Mute the dialogue and just put on a nice audiobook. This is a case where all the writers needed to do was make mashed potatoes and somehow burned the whole franchise down. I just love the idea of someone listening to Moby Dick on audiobook <laughs> while running around and killing skags and, and bandits all day. <laughs> With exploding rocket launchers and guns that scream in pain yeah exactly yeah. oh man so funny yeah. that this is a negative review but even this guy says the gameplay is 10 out of 10 so i kind of feel like this guy is maybe my spiritual brother here like we really love the gameplay but the story not quite so much all right and the next review here is a positive review best played muted with your choice of music playlist to avoid contracting aids from the dialogue 
8 out of 10 during gameplay, 6 out of 10 when you consider it forces you to wait and listen to poop jokes every 10 minutes. What? Now, That's come wrong. on. We know it's not every 10 minutes. It's easily every three minutes. I was going to say, <laughs> and number one, there's nothing wrong with poop jokes. Okay. So, uh, no, there's just a lot of them for, for better or worse. Mm, yeah. As well, there should be. I was going to say, yes, for better, for sure. Yeah. You're consistently looking in toilets and porta potties. Like you open the door, poop shoots out, it's then there's true. a gun that you can pick up. You're doing this throughout the entire game. Several episodes ago, I talked about the Porta Pooper, which was the legendary gun that I got from a Porta Potty <laughs> that shot out sludge piles with fart sounds. So, revolutionary ground ground yeah. <laughs> of a gun. And, and then finally, we uh, have a negative review here. I can't stand this game anymore. I waited seven years for this, and I wish I could forget it existed. To put it simply, since there's lots of other negative reviews that have already made these points, everything feels so forced. Most of the characters are annoying and cringe. Gameplay is better, but I stopped caring about loot after being flooded with legendaries all the time. Hardly innovated on Borderlands 2, lack of respect for Borderlands 2 protagonists, and Borderlands 3 protagonists are not recognized in the story. And you know, I I did think that that was really interesting. In all of the cutscenes... Your character's not involved in any of them. You're actively involved in all of the action during the game, but you're not actually watching your character in the cutscenes. It's really an interesting decision from a designer Dude, standpoint. I never noticed that until you said something. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, right? It is. Yeah. You said that, and I was like, my brain was slowly going like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I like. I really like his point. It doesn't... It doesn't, like, progress Borderlands 2 too much further. Like, there are new guns. There's, like, more gameplay mechanics that. But, like, just get Borderlands 2. Like, it's better. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, we always guess what percentage of the reviews are positive. And I think I won last time. No, I won last time. (laughs) All right, it was Josh. All right, what what, what do you think, Josh? Um, this is just an all around solid game. Yes, it's got some flaws, but I don't see a lot of people not liking this game. I'm going to say 94%. Oh, wow. Okay. Todd? I, I'm going way lower because I, I don't think people forget that it was released on Epic Games first, which at the time, like, that was a very, very controversial decision. And it falls short of most of the other games in the Borderlands franchise. Um, and I think it introduced like, like paid DLC or not introduced, but it had paid DLC. And I think, uh, like a game pass system. So I'm going to go like maybe 78. Oof. Oh, okay. 78, huh? Wow. Well, I was actually pretty close to Todd. I wrote down 80%. Oh, and the actual retail price, 83%, oh 83, man. Okay. <sighs> do you guys, all right. Do you think this is an 83%? Is that a fair rating for this game? If you compare it to other games in the franchise, it should be in the mid eighties somewhere, which is what I thought. I, I dropped it a little bit because of how Borderlands Two really raised the expectations, probably a little too high. Right, but Borderlands Three by itself is still a rock solid game. It's a very good, you game. know. I just I don't know. Mid, that seems low mid, to me. Mid eighties is a B. Like that's fine. Well, mid eighties on Steam means that game's kind of, eh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's like a B plus game. Probably deserves high eighties, but I don't have any real heartburn over it being eighty three. All right, well, uh, Paul, guess what? Oh, I, I'm the winner. You get to introduce your favorite segment, Paul. All right, let's hit that music. Hey, baby, do you believe in love at first sight, or should I walk by again? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I I thought I'd bring something special to the table this time. <laughs> the most Paul intro I've ever heard. <laughs> that, oh my goodness. Nice.
Oh, you knew you were gonna win. <laughs> you knew you were gonna win, and you prepped. Yeah, I, I had a feeling I was gonna win this one. So, oh. in in this segment, we all rate a game: make love, marry, or murder. So, who wants? To, well, you know what? I, I think we have a pretty good idea where Josh is going. So, let's go with him first. I am going to make love. Believe it or not, I know you thought I was probably gonna say marry, but to oh, me, yeah. yeah, that's where okay. I thought you were going. Uh, what, Mary? Yeah, Mary. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna make love. It's I'm, I'm with you guys. Borderlands Two, I find superior in just about every way. If we're taking Borderlands Three solely on its own, it's a great game. Like you cannot play this game and be disappointed. Like honestly, I don't feel like anybody would buy this and just be like, "Oh, that was a waste of money." So it does start to get repetitive. Like I, none of us have actually finished this game, um, despite owning it for quite some time, which I think is a little telling right there. So, I mean, it is a lot of fun. It is a very good AAA title game. Tons of fun gun gunplay, funny characters, but it's just going to start to wear on you after a little while um, because nothing in the later rounds is vastly different from what you do in the beginning rounds, like the beginning levels. So enjoy it while it lasts, but I don't see this being like a super long-term game that we're going to just keep going back to. So in, in the relationship metaphor, Borderlands 3 is great dating material, but it's really Borderlands 3's sister, number two, that's the marriage material. Exactly. Yes. That's Okay. It's, it's, okay. <laughs> just yeah, don't let yeah. Borderlands 3 catch you. In a, with in, in a weird scenario, it's the <laughs> older sister. Yep. Yep. The, the older the, sister. The yeah. more mature sister out of the bunch. All right, so Josh is going to make love. I, I'm a little surprised, but I understand. What, what about you, Todd? So so I'm torn. Like, if we're talking about Borderlands 3, I'm, on, I'm completely on the line and could be convinced either way with make love or murder. If we're talking about Borderlands franchise... It's a Mary all the way. I love Borderlands games. So you're a polygamist. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I do to you and you and you. Todd's like, I want both sisters and. <laughs> right. The, if, if, the... I, if, it's a, if it's a package deal, mm -hmm. then yeah. Like it's, it's a Mary because Borderlands games, like one, two, prequel, like all of them are fantastic. The pre-sequel. <laughs> um Borderlands 3 isn't the like brightest star out of the bunch and that's why it's like it's it's a great fan franchise if this is your first Borderlands game you will have so much fun with it if you've played all the other ones it's it's not anything special really so like but I don't that's know a I'm, murder? I'm like I'm you're literally on, on the murder? fence when you put it like that, <laughs> you are bordering on murder. I all right. I'll 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 go make love. Like I'm fine with that. It's a fun game. You're gonna have fun. Um, it, it like co-op's great. The campaign's great. It's like the campaign's fine. Like it's it's good if you don't have a lot of exposure to Borderlands. I feel like the only people who will would be disappointed have already played borderlands three like they they bought it on release day and they're huge borderlands fans and they expected this game and had high expectations for it and it it fell short but like if that wasn't you and you haven't played it yet like you will love this game yeah, I, I think you're both spot on. I definitely agree with both of your praises and criticisms there. I think Borderlands 3 is a great summer girlfriend, right? Like yeah. maybe you're at summer camp and, and the camp scale is more on a curve because you have fewer options. So it's great for a summer, but not marriage material. I, I think it's a great game to dabble in and have fun. And if you stop playing it because you aren't really into the storyline, I don't think you'll really miss it. I mean, Borderlands 2... 
I was constantly driven to see what was going to happen next. And I never really had that in Borderlands 3. So it's it's a make love for me. Unanimous and making love. Yep. That's well, our podcast. Though we had to we did have to convince Todd <laughs> to not think about murder. Murder it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, you know, it's this was like in the back of my head. Is it worth the price? Sixty dollars. Wait, is it? Oof. There's no way this game's still sixty bucks. It is still sixty dollars. All right. Public service announcement: There are websites out there that are legit websites where you can go buy keys to games for very little money. Um, and I, I mean, oh man, I wouldn't pay sixty dollars for this game. Not at this point, but yeah, it, it looks like if you really wanted to, you can get it for around twenty to twenty-five bucks. Yeah, that's my point. If you can pick this, if you can pick up Borderlands three for twenty twenty-five bucks, to me, that's a no-brainer. If you have not played this franchise, that's going to be a phenomenally well-spent twenty bucks. This is a highbrow podcast. What websites would someone not go to? Because. Uh. They uh, shouldn't. SketchyGameKeys.com. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> totally legit GameKeys.com. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> if you have to say it, it's probably uh, not true. Public service announcement. The ones you find on eBay where they say, hey, this is for an offline account. You're not actually getting the game itself. This is an offline Steam account. Yeah, don't do those either. <laughs> that, that's not a good sign. Yeah, make sure yeah. that it's a global key <laughs> yeah. or whatever country you live in. If it says no multiplayer or you can't connect online, that's a bad sign. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the leaderboard and see where this game stacks up. I think we need to quantify to give a fair leaderboard ranking. We're ranking Borderlands 3 on its standalone game prowess for the leaderboard, right? Like we can, we can compare make love, Mary murder based on previous entries in the franchise. But I mean, for the leaderboard, right. Are we saying, Hey, how does borderlands three as a standalone game? rank? Yeah. Yeah. I see it like the game desert Island. Like if I can only have one game with me to play, I'm going to compare Borderlands 3 to other things on our leaderboard. Like, would I rather right. that one game be GTA Online or Borderlands 3? Raft or Borderlands 3? At least that's how I take it. That's a great way to do and, it. All right. And just just for for new listeners, this segment is where we're going back. We have a leaderboard on our website, MultiplayerPodcast.com, where we have 34 games ranked in order on our preference as a like collective group and so what we do every every time we review a game is we put it up against this leaderboard and we say where does it fall in line in the 34 about to be 35 games um and sometimes there's a little disagreement sometimes you know hindsight we ranked a game too high or too low um and then you know we have corrective episodes where we go back through the leaderboard um but for this game i do i start 20 no higher. no higher it's higher than 20 yeah 20 is where we have payday 2 valorant rim world gtfo I, i'd go higher than that all right Far Cry 5. You guys compared it to Far Cry, Far Cry 5 at 13 earlier. High, low? Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. we're in the right ballpark. When I think Far Cry 5, I'm thinking very similar in terms of how much fun that I had. See, it's it's difficult for me. I didn't play Far Cry 5 with you guys. Or Raft, which is 13 and 14. <laughs> It's a hard for you to rank those, Todd. I, yeah. It was like, yeah, I don't know. Those sound like fun games. Yeah, I think 10 to 15 is is where I would take a look. I would rather play Warzone. I'd rather play Among Us, and I'd rather play No Man's Sky, which is 10, 11, 12. I think 
I would rank, for me, I think I would rank it just above No Man's Sky. From a co-op multiplayer aspect, like No Man's Sky is a phenomenal game, but we even talked about how the multiplayer portion of that game is not like anything to write home about, even though the game itself is great now. And I think if you guys were like, hey, we could play Borderlands together or we could play No Man's Sky together, Borderlands to me would be the one I would want to play more so. Yeah, I think I think that's completely fair. No Man's Sky is a great game. The multiplayer aspect is a little confusing and yeah, I think Borderlands has a better like co-op system um than No Man's Sky does. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. I think my biggest issue is that we have Far Cry 5 below No Man's Sky. And I love Far Cry 5. I mean, for me, I can explicitly tell you the story of that game and my experience. Borderlands is like, well, there's sort of these vaults. I think one of them had a monster like in the first game. It just hasn't really stuck with me. I'm not entirely sure I could even explain the story. Uh, Although I do agree that I'd rather play Borderlands than No Man's Sky. Did you play other Far Cry games? I did after playing Far Cry 5. I I went back and I bought the third, but those are the only two that I've played. Like, I'm just curious if someone came in blind to Borderlands 3, they might have a similar experience where it's all brand new. It's very interesting. Like, the characters are loud over the top. The colors are bright. The guns are all unique because you didn't experience it in 1 and 2 might be similar could be but borderlands 3 doesn't have a diabetic bear named cheeseburger <laughs> <laughs> yeah i th- I think we're exactly in the right range i'd put it below Warzone and among us i'd put it around no man's sky and far cry 5 if you want to put it right above no man's sky that's fine i'll just try to lobby to put far cry 5 above no man's sky in the future and honestly we do have to we do need to adjust our leaderboard um, but for now, I would put it. I would put it at twelve, if it was up to me. All right. So right below Among Us and above No Man's Sky. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Lock it in. All right. Aye. All right. Hey, look at that. <laughs> the eyes have it. Against. How long do we wait? I, don't I, know. I think that's sufficient. Do we, do we give people <laughs> time to chime in? <laughs> Don't worry, we're still going to be recording when this episode releases, just in case. (laughs) Oh, all right. Well, that wraps up the leaderboard segment for our show today. If you want to view all of our rankings, you can find them on our site, multiplayerpodcast.com. If you're interested in finding out more information, you can find us on our website, multiplayerpodcast.com. Patreon, MultiplayerSquad.com, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, forward slash MultiplayerPod. That's it for this show. See you guys Thursday. Yeah. Thir- 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 yes. thir- I, I felt like Todd just froze up or something. <laughs> I was like, did we lose I- Todd right at the end of the show? His Discord froze. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how I wanted to end it. I just... uh, See you guys. See ya. All right, can I just share one quick thing in the outro? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I really love the stealth mission with Claptrap in the beginning. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yes, where he's trying to sneak up on the... Yeah, yeah, where where Claptrap says we're going to sneak up, and he's talking really loudly, and he's like, bop, 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 hide behind this rock. (laughs) Doot, 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 going over here. And then he sets off a bomb, and you ask him, you're like, well, won't that make them suspicious? And he says, no, it's only when people don't hear explosions that they get suspicious. (laughs) And I just thought that was such a funny beginning machine. I love Claptrap, man. I, I, I That guy cracks me oh, up. He's hilarious. I wish I could have a little Claptrap. Claptrap for life.